I have a part-time job as an archival assistant at my school, where I spend hours at a time sorting through old newspapers, magazines, photos, and other historical stuff. It may sound boring on paper, but I love my job. I work at the largest collection of LGBTQ materials in the world, and every week I get to immerse myself in the tangible embodiment of queer history. I found one of the most resonant connections to queer history through a collection of letters written to the editors of one magazine. One magazine was published from 1952 to 1969, and was the first widely distributed publication for homosexuals in the United States. Queer people from all walks of life wrote letters to the staff of One, sometimes hoping to be published in the magazine, sometimes seeking advice, and sometimes just venting about life. Since I felt such a strong connection to history through the stories that emerged from these letters, I figured it might be cool to show some letters to other young LGBTQ people and hear what they had to say. How do you feel about learning queer history? I'm excited. I really like reading about uh, queer people that have existed before me. I wish I knew more. It's not something I like, I guess, like really like sat down and just kind of like looked at. Like I know a little bit about like Stonewall and like kind of like Pride and like the big like things, mm -hmm. but I don't know a lot about kind of the like nuances of like what queer culture actually looked like in the yeah. past. And I feel like I'm more knowledgeable about like my specific identity than I yeah, am about for sure. others. It's it's really radical. Like it feels a lot In more every radical sense, yeah. yeah, than most than most history. Mm. But I feel like that's a lot of minority history has mm. to be radical. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna give y'all the letters now. I'm a little scared. I know. Right? I'm like I'm nervous. Like nervous. <laughs> Oh, no. <laughs> First line. <laughs> Come on, Julia. <laughs> Why you gotta do this? <laughs> this one. <sighs> Lord. <laughs> oh, jeez. When you're ready, if you could each share a brief summary of the letter you read and maybe read a moment that resonated the most with you. Mine's just about um, this guy who, well, it starts, I know you can't answer my question, but how does one find love? Which is just a very omnipresent thing for me. It says, I tried to make friends with a man that attracted me. I was quite naive then. Um, and then worked for the same company that I did. Um, and he was like certain that this guy was attracted to him as well, but um, then he rejected him. Um, and then this guy like lost his job, his health kind of really deteriorated while he wasn't working. And so his parents asked him to move home um, and go to a mental hospital, which he did. But the last part is what I really like about the letter. He says, I know I can live without sex since I've done so all my life, but very few men can live without love, and I'm not one of these men. Um, and love is just such an important thing, I think, that transcends anything physical. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. It's just, yeah. It's Here, uh, this one's this one's like almost an answer. This one's, I think, a year later than yours. It's It's by a man that has always meant to write, but didn't have any reason before and he talks about how he lived in LA he had his family there and many gay friends he had a good profession uh, and achieved success in his field in a very young age uh, but his parents friends and career could not make up for a great lack that he had always felt so then he met a sailor who had come to LA on leave um, and I, I can't tell if this pun is intentional or not but the writer says the first time I met him I knew I was hooked 
because, you know, like fish and whatever. Mm -hmm. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then the writer says that he fell deeply in love with him. He was an unusually fine boy, and he couldn't deny what he felt for him. And then after uh, the sailor got out of the Navy, the two of them moved to Ohio to stay with the sailor's family until they found a, an apartment. And um, the writer ends the letter by saying that he loves him very much and they've grown ever closer. Uh, even his family's an, an important part of his life. Uh, they have a wonderful group of friends. Um, this is, this part like really speaks to me. We are young, I am 24, he is 23, but have no fear of the future. There is nothing that can that cannot be discussed between us. I'm glad I have waited until I could write you a happy letter. I think that's that's really amazing. Mm -hmm. Well, the other two had like little happy endings, at least <laughs> at some point. Oh no. This one's really, really, really sad. Oh. Um, this is from a, tr well, I'll say trans man. I don't think he's at that point yet. Mm -hmm. um, he talks about, um, being outwardly a woman, but uh, he says, but inside I have a male's emotions. In fact, at times I become two different people. For a while I'm a woman and even act like one, when, then all of a sudden I'm a man. This change doesn't show on the outside, only on the inside. Um, maybe even gender fluid. Yeah, maybe so. Um, he says that he wants to spend, I'll use they them pronounce it, their life. They're, they're not attracted to men, only women but that they don't feel uh, uh, right classified in the lesbian community mm -hmm. at all. Um, they really only identify with their male side. And um, they're talking about how isolated they feel and how lonely that they feel in Baltimore. Um, and it's just like, it's such like a lonely, desperate letter. Like they're just, pouring their heart out to this magazine because they think that that's the only place that they can find acceptance. Um, and they ask three questions that are like labeled A, B, and C. It says, A, if you get letters from other girls with the same sort of problem, B, if you know of any who might live pretty close to me, and C, if you know of someone who doesn't have my problem but would like to be friends with me. And the last one <laughs> really hurts. Um, they called it. The, they they say that it's a lonely hearts letter, but um, that one is their last hope. But the second to last line is really hard hitting. It's um, I'll be waiting anxiously to hear from you or someone who might be able to bring a little happiness into my life. Um, and then sincerely yours, Lori. So yeah, it's a very isolationist tale. I have always wished that I found out that you know being non-binary was an option when I was younger, because I feel like I was just raised, so you know, like, you're a girl, this is what you do. Mm -hmm. And it kind of sounds like they would have benefited from the same thing. Like, it just seems like no one has talked about being queer until very recently. I think that the common experience, at least that I get from my letter, is isolationism, mm -hmm. which is kind of ironic because it's such a like widespread problem for all of us yeah. that we don't think that anybody else is dealing with the same stuff that we're dealing with. Because again, no one talks about it. Cause exactly. like, There's a lot of persecution that can happen yeah. if you do. Like, you don't exactly. know who's safe until you know who's yeah. safe. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think that at least like in recent years, things have gotten better in terms of community just because of like the advent of the internet and like Absolutely. people yeah. being able to like connect Tumblr. with other people. Mm -hmm. Education is just so important for like mm -hmm. people that are ignorant of like their identity and, and things yeah. like mm -hmm. that. Like I probably wouldn't have realized who I was in college if I had not like learned so much and like been accepted into these queer spaces. Yeah, yeah. I didn't even know what it meant to be gay when I like first realized I was attracted to guys. Um, and I like literally Googled, like why am I like attracted to guys? Like I think having the internet as a resource to like, just like let me ask these questions was definitely something that helped me like realize what was happening instead of just like being so confused. Yeah. <laughs> I 
always feel a little disconnected yeah. from mm -hmm. the LGBTQ community um, just because I'm surrounded by so many straight people all yeah. the time. Mm -hmm. um, and like, thankfully, I, you know, I do like acapella and things like that, which mm -hmm. helps. But um, I think definitely, um, I don't know, just like learning about queer history helps me feel a little more connected to it mm -hmm. and helps me like understand kind of the commonalities between what I'm going through and what queer people have And I think a lot through. of what people who are against queer people now say is like, oh, it's such a fad, like it's a new Ugh, thing, Tumblr, yeah. you know, whatever. <laughs> oh my gosh, but this yeah. kind of, you know, it solidifies we've always been here. Yeah. So it's yeah. really amazing to see, you know, a primary source to use the academic term of, <laughs> you know, people that are like me. Mm -hmm. In the end, it was really interesting to see my friends reconsider their own experiences in relation to what they read in the letters. Although feeling lonely is a consistent theme in everyone's story, it seems like the internet has created a space for education, acceptance, and community, sort of like what one magazine was back in the day, but even more accessible. Thank you.